You know, we ran a multidisciplinary clinic in the United States. We would move more than 100 people through our clinic in a day. And a lot of the doctors in the community would send all of their patients to our clinic because we dealt with chronic conditions. We dealt with chronic conditions. And chronic conditions require a lifestyle change. Acute conditions like appendicitis or, you know, you break a bone is, is really uh, acute. Medicine works so great for acute conditions, but chronic conditions, not a lot of people want to take that on because it means you've got to make different choices. You've got to change, you know, you've got three types of stress, physical, chemical, and emotional. You have three types of balance, physical, chemical, and emotion. And you've got to get at least two of those in order before the third one comes around. Get someone more chemically balanced, more physically balanced, they're going to be more emotionally balanced. Get some more emotionally balanced, more chemically balanced, and more physically balanced. And so we would work with these conditions, but we had a lot of people that came to my office that, you know, they ate like so, they had so much rigidity around their food. Now, I mean, I eat healthy, but they ate, you know, just, they were a little over the top. And those were the people that had all the health conditions. They, were, they should be the most healthy. And yet, a lot of them were the most sick. And why? Because underneath their need to control everything, including their food, is this tremendous amount of rigidity and fear of not being perfect. And I could, we could give them all kinds of chemicals, or we can sit down and eat a great meal, and it's not going to change their health because there's a deeper condition that's running as a program that's stopping them from metabolizing the very food because when you're in fear or rigidity, the cells close down to nutrition because you're in survival. And so the cells don't absorb, they don't eliminate, they don't secrete, they don't communicate. That's because we don't do any of that when we're in survival and a cell is just a small packet or battery that we live off of. And we have 70 trillion to 120 trillion of them. So, so if the second center is out of balance and the person is eating a meal and they're worried about the food they're going to eat and they're judging everything that they're eating, then it makes sense then that coming from that consciousness, they're not going to be metabolizing or using this center at, at, at its height. Are you with me still? Now think about this. Why do people pray at the dinner table? Why do they take a moment and they give thanks? Gratitude is the ultimate state of... If you're in a state of gratitude, you're turning off the sympathetic nervous system and you're turning on the parasympathetic nervous system and your body's in the perfect state to eat. Are you with me still? Now throw a little love at the table. God's coming together to celebrate, to toast, to enjoy, to talk, to engage, to love, to do all those things. And the consciousness of consumption from the heart is just a way better way to metabolize food than any other way. Would you agree? Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't make the right choices, but you sh there's an element of consciousness that's involved that is equally as important as the food you consume. Yes or no? And you could be the most successful person in the world and be so caught up in your ego and your importance and your power that the same thing happens. You're the most unhappy person in the world and you don't know how to love because energy was stuck in this center. And let's go to the first one, since you asked. If you're, if you're going to make the commitment to exchange energy with another person, it would be in your best interest to do it from a place of loving and giving instead of doing it from a place of lust because you would have a sex hangover, you know, where you feel like your energy is drawn from you, and that's, that's not what we're after here. That's, that's one way, but when two come together and they're giving and exchanging energy, that creates more of a bond, and when they have intention behind what they're doing, then the act becomes amazing. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to do that three times a day. Maybe the first couple weeks, but then, you know, you settle down. <laughs> but you figure it out because there's more to life than just that. You understand. 
So that creates more balance, and of course, if you're going to make the choice to do that, then you're going to do it with someone who, who is of equal energy, of equal consciousness, where you can truly come together and exchange that information. And during the orgasm, the release during the orgasm, when two come together, is consciousness dipping right into the void. It's dipping right in there, and two are dipping in together, and the positive and negative come together, and you create one, or wholeness. That's when energy is enhanced. That's when all the great chemicals and hormones that are created from it, that act really give life to the body. And people look like they're, di hey, you in love? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, because now oxytocin is being released, vasopressin is being released. You got this honeymoon stage of the relationship going on, but when the, when the oxytocin wears off after the honeymoon stage, here comes the program. <laughs> Excuse me, who are you? <laughs> you know, it's a different game then. Now, last point. But if two people are evolving together, moving in the same direction, and they have the same passions, the same interests, they are evolving together and they're in a process of evolution and self-discovery, then they will evolve their energy as well. And there could come a moment where there's less energy there. And there's just so much energy in their heart that that's where they want to keep it. And there's nothing wrong with that either. It just becomes something, something that you could possibly outgrow at some point. But it's an evolution, and we're all evolving. <laughs>